Hi there, my name is Charles Swarzfagin from SIPA. And this presentation, I would like to discuss with you what we've named the uh, Cauchy Integral Formula or Integral Theorem. In actual in fact, I'm going to present an example on how you can apply this theorem. The theorem stated the following. He said that if you've got an expression like this under the integral sign, under the conditions that the function you see there in the numerator z is analytic in and on a simple closed curve c, then the value of that integral will turn out to be 2 pi i multiplied by the value of the function, in this case the numerator here, at the pole zero. So I hope you can see that, that what happens that we have got a rational expression here, but there's a numerator which is analytic in and on this curve. But this rational expression has got a pole at z zero. But if you isolate this numerator, the numerator alone is analytic in and on this curve. Under that situation, the value of the integral tends to be now the function f of z evaluated at the pole, this pole z0. That's how schematically I can represent that. So now we need to take a, an example and try to apply this theorem in combination with what you saw before, that if a function has got several poles, within the uh, closed curve, which is the part of integration, then each pole can be isolated and uh, integrate. So we're going to apply a similar manipulation here. So this is the exercise. Integral on a closed curve C, the function is 2z over z plus 1, z minus 2 by 2z plus 1. In this case, Let's assume that all these poles are within the given closed curve. So what we know from the previous discussion is that the integral of this f of z equals to the same function integrated around a small a set which contains only one pole. In this case, this first of all, write this z plus 1, z minus 2, 2z two plus 1, 2z there, dz plus integral around gamma 2, which is second closed path, which will contain only one pole. In this case, we depict the same function 2z, z plus 1, multiplied by z minus 2 by 2z plus 1 dz plus the integral around a third circle which contains only one of these poles which is going to be z plus 1 z minus 2 2z plus 1 dz 2z right i would like you to pay very close attention the manipulation which I'm going to do here. So I want to get this kind of situation, isolating only one pole at a time, which is going to contain uh, these three, have one pole in each one of them. So what I'm going to do to create this kind of a situation, I will choose here which pole I want to be contained here then I isolate this one. In this case, I'm going to choose the pole minus one for this factor, which then motivates that I must write this integral in that form, which is going to be integral around gamma one, then have here z minus z, my, z minus minus one, in other words, I'm having my denominator here in this form. Now, in the numerator, 
I'm going to have 2z over z minus 2 multiplied by 2z plus 1 dz. What I've applied here, I've applied uh, my knowledge of uh, working with fractions. In this case, I'll remind you, it's, when you dealt with fractions, you should have learned that if you've got A over B, C, this is the same as A over B over C, which is exactly equal to A over C over B. That's what I'm, I'm using here. So you can take uh, this product to be B in one case, and then this BC the denominator. You must try to make sure that you, you are comfortable with that. Now, my integral in this form, what is important according to the statement of the formula, the numerator, which in this case I can call this f of z, when you look at it, it must, the only call which is in this sector is minus 1. The rest are outside. So this function must be analytic in and on this scale. The same principle I'm going to apply there, then I'm going to have this. Now for gamma 2, I'll choose 2 to be my pole. Then I take my denominator in that form, z minus z0, z minus z0, so my z0 is 2. Using this kind of manipulation, I'm going to write 2z over z plus 1 by 2z plus 1, dz. So in this particular case here, this numerator now becomes my fz, and you can check if 2 is the only pole inside this and the rest are outside. So this expression is analytic in and on gamma 2. Then coming this side, we're going to have plus integral now around gamma 3. With gamma 3 now, I'm going to isolate my last pole which involves this term. Now handle this term carefully you can see that 2z plus 1 is equal to 2 brackets z plus 1 over 2 which means my pole here is going to be mm. minus half and 2 in the denominator, I can take it outside the integral sign as a half. And here I'm going to have a z minus minus 1 over 2. Again, my denominator is in that form of the theorem. Then in the numerator, I'm going to have z plus 1 in brackets multiplied by z minus 2 dz. We call this isolation of a pole at a time. So you isolate this pole and you make sure that this pole is in this uh, closed cave and the rest are outside making that analytic. Same thing is repeated here to make sure that 2 is inside this cave and then that expression is analytic. So in the 3, the setup agrees with the statement of the formula. So what now uh, we need to do is we now take this as our fz for this case and that one is a different fz for that case. So all of them are going to be integrated that way. So what you, what you can do here is to take 2 pi, 2 pi i multiplied by fz which is that, right, 2 z over z minus 2 brackets 2z two plus 1 in this case we can write here this way and say z equals to minus 1 meaning we are going to evaluate this expression at minus 1 which standing for that plus similarly 2 pi i multiplied by fz in this case which is that which is going to be 2z this is going to be 2z over z plus 1 
z plus 1 multiplied by 2z plus 1, which is our numerator here. And this, we write that line that indicate we are evaluating this at z equals to 2 plus 2 pi i multiplied by 2z over, be careful here, must be careful here, is 2 pi i here and there's a half multiplied here which is going to be half multiplied by 2 pi i multiplied by this expression z plus 1 z minus 2 and then we value this at z equals 2 minus half. Now at that stage what we are left with is substituting z in this expression by minus 1 and getting a value multiplying there similarly there and there then we can work out this problem there and now get our finally numerical value there which can be 0 or any other complex value so I think um, for this example what is important what I wanted to illustrate is how you manipulate this given expression in such a way that you apply the previous uh, um, situation whereby we uh, said the integral of this uh, function will be the integral around small around circles or small closed path which contain one pole at a time which we are getting in this situation here and once we've done that we now try to create the situation of the formula whereby we put it, this rational expression with a numerator which is analytic in and those scale. That's what we check here. And we check there similarly. Then after that, this expression here is just playing the role of f at zero, which we need to evaluate by sub simple substituting in each of the expressions here, then adding whatever we get to get the, the final results. Otherwise that way, that's how we apply the coach's integral formula. Now, this is one version of coach integral formula and the second version of it is when we have this in this form where we have a similar situation f of z there like that, which is analytic in and on this curve. But what you notice when you look at the pole, we see that the pole is repeated n plus 1 times. And then, if that is the case, what we, we do is, we evaluate the integral by taking the nth derivative of the function, evaluate it at z0, and the multiply by 2 pi i. So I would like also to quickly give you an example for this one. Then this will be the end of this presentation. Then we can go and practice similar work. Let's do this. For this second example, let's take uh, an integral. And again, here we're going to suppose that the pole is in the curve C. And what we have here, we've got Z minus pi to the power 4 and the fun our function is e to the power 2, sorry, our function is e to the power 2z. And we're integrating here with respect to that. Now, so what you can see, this function f e to the power z is defined everywhere, and its derivatives are also continuous. So the statement of function up here actually requires that f of z must be n times differentiable. Now it can be differentiated n times. And then we see that the pole here is repeated n plus 1 times. So then the integration must be evaluated this way. So our first thing there, once you see the repetition or the multiplicity of the pole in this case, which is pi, we must note that our n plus 1 is equal to 4. Then solving this simple equation, we must see that our n is equal to 3, which means then 
the order of the, this derivative now is going to be of order 3. So what you can do now, you can simply check our function f of z, which is e to the power 2z, or any other function we'll be having in that case, which is differentiable, in the same number of times, we find our fz. Now you can just use our usual rules of differentiation without necessarily using the complex differentiation. And this will be 2 e to the power 2z. For the second time, time this will be 8 e to the power 2z. So this is the derivative which you want, we need here. So we are going to now evaluate this thing as 2 pi i multiplied by the third derivative which is 8 e to the power 2z evaluated at uh, z equals 2 to pi. Then that will give us 2 pi i multiplied by 8 e to the power 2 pi and that is going to give us 16 pi e to the power 2 pi multiplied by all of this multiplied by our, our imaginary unity and that will be the value of the integral. So I hope it is clear how we apply the two theorems. So, but I advise you to look again at this explanation and try to understand very well what is happening in this last evaluation and also look at uh, solved examples in your notes and be able to do your own practice on this kind of uh, integration. Then I will refer you to your text for exercises and your tutorial sheets. Otherwise, thanks for listening and goodbye.